Richard Sherman is joining us, and this guy has made a transition to playing defense, which you actually did last year, and you're getting into it now. I mean, on a full-time basis, first day of camp, what's it been like? Uh, it's been fun. You know, I, you know, I had a couple interceptions today. Uh, you know, a, a whole season in the summer, you know, getting into it has, has, has been, you know, has been amazing. You know, it's helped so much, and, you know, obviously the culture, the, the coaches have helped, you know, Coach Harbaugh, you know, Coach Mason, all the guys, and, you know, my teammates, you know, even Co even Ryan Whalen, you know, Chris Woos, who Doug Baldwin, helping me get acclimated to different releases and things like that. You got, you know, so many different styles of playing corner. You got Corey Gatewood, you know, everybody's helping me out. So, you know, I got to give thanks to all those guys. Was that you guys played against both the Rail Reavers and Richard Sherman this year. Who's the better locker room? Sherman's too fat and slow. Fat and slow. Yeah. Okay. And he's, so, a, and he's a punk, and he, and he, he took drugs, and he shouldn't, and, he shouldn't even play. You know, he, he got through on a yeah. bad yeah. appeal. Yeah, that's yeah. such a Isn't it? And Reavers. Yeah. He's yeah. a shutdown corner. He's a shutdown corner. Cool. Yeah, Reavers, that one. Richard Sherman, nice to meet you. How are you shut up, are you? Hey, Richard Sherman, nice are to meet you. you? Pleasure I'm, to meet you. I'm sorry. No, oh, it's okay. It's all good. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all good. 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 You got me. It's all good. We're sorry, brother. Oh, Reavers, number one, of course. Reavers, number one. No question. Because Richard Sherman's on the Adderall, dude. Is that really? <laughs> you already know, though. Nice to meet you, Richard Sherman. Huh. You are? I am Richard Sherman. Pleasure. <laughs> hey, go Niners. Oh. Don't let him beat us up too much. You play well today, OK? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> hey. They're about to try me. They're about to try me. I'm going to capitalize. He got fear in his heart for you. He's scared of you. He don't want to play when you out there. Kaepernick takes the snap. Brooks fires near side, going for the end zone. Ball is picked up and after it. He's picked up in the end zone. <laughs> I think what Richard Sherman did was wrong, and I think that it was definitely less than classy because you don't need to be doing the choke sign towards Colin Kaepernick. You don't need uh, to be in Michael Crabtree's face like that. You don't need to be talking about it and personalizing things on that level in front of a nationally televised audience uh, the way that he did in the post game, just like he didn't need to trash talk to Tom Brady, just like he didn't need to accuse Jim Harbaugh of bullying, just like he didn't need to encourage Pete Carroll at one time to run up the score on the San Francisco 49ers. There's a plethora of instances where there are things that Richard Sherman has done that he didn't necessarily need to be doing. Richard Sherman is a guy that likes to talk and he has a whole lot to say and and 95% of the things he says are, are really good things. Mm -hmm. And 95% of the things he does are really good things. So uh, I, I'm glad he's getting a chance to let people see exactly who he is. This stage will give him an opportunity to, to let those people out there that have all that hate for him yeah. see exactly what Richard Sherman is all about, that he's more than just that 30-second soundbite they saw after a very emotional game. So I'm happy he's able to get out there and talk a little bit. As a player, I understand the intensity that exists down on that field. Uh, it, it's something that's hard to grasp from a fan's point of view. So, and, and, and also we have to keep in consideration that this is just who Richard Sherman is. So when he reacted the way he did, I thought it was very loud. I thought, like, wow. I mean, and I knew it was going to be good for TV, and I knew that it was going to be something that was publicized. Uh, but I really believe that that was him in the heat of the moment. Mm -hmm. Obviously, these two guys have some type of bad blood between one another. 
and you know the excitement of winning the game, the excitement of going to the Super Bowl, and the excitement of making the biggest play of the game, one of the biggest plays of the game, you know, I think carried over into the interview. I think it's too much. To me, it was kind of embarrassing. Kids are watching this, and kids copy the players. They don't know which things that they should copy or not, so they think that's how they have to play. And I think if there's any, any apologies that ought to be made, it ought to be to the kids. That's not the way we do it. I thought it was embarrassing. I thought he took away a lot from the other players on his team. I mean, guys played their butts off. Guys coached their butts off. And then it got to be all about one guy. And in a, in a team sport, that's wrong. And then mouthing off, the Fox Sports' is Aaron Andrews, following the Seahawks' incredible victory over the 49ers on Sunday to take the NFC title. The game ended with this, a play for the ages that put Sherman's team in the Super Bowl. But the icing on the cake was surely this, Sherman blasting the 49ers' Michael Crabtree moments after victory. Well, I'm the best corner in the game. When you try me with a sorry receiver like Crabtree, that's the result you're going to get. Don't you ever talk about me about you. Crabtree, don't you open your mouth about the best. Oh, yeah, I'm going to set it for you real quick. Sherman went on to apologize, and tonight he talks exclusively to CNN's Rachel Nichols, who joins me now. Rachel, before we get to your interview, which is a great coup for you and for CNN, uh, what was your reaction when you were watching it live to what he did? Well, here's what's fascinating about Richard Sherman. He is definitely one of the brashest, most outspoken guys in the NFL, but he's also one of the smartest players in the NFL. This is a guy who graduated from Stanford while he was playing and even started on his master's while he was there playing football. So not a surprise that while this was a very emotional moment, when he sat down to talk to me, he was very reasonable and thoughtful. Take a listen. There was the moment on the field when you made the play. There's the choke sign. There's the interview on the field post game. Then there's the press conference interview. What do you regret about all that? What do you not regret about all of that? Well, there, there isn't much about it I regret. You know, mostly I regret the, I guess, the, the storm afterwards. The, the, you know, the way it was covered, the way it was perceived, and, and the attention that it took away from the fantastic performances from my teammates, you know. And that, that, that's the only part of it I regret, you know, the way it's covered. You know, I, it is what it is. What, what I said is what I said. I, 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 you know, I don't say I, I probably shouldn't have attacked another person. You know, I don't mean to attack him. And that was, that was mature, and I probably shouldn't have done that. I, I regret doing that. But I just felt like my teammates deserved better. And, I, you know, I have to apologize to them, and I have. These guys push you in the face. You're doing this, doing that. You know, I'm not gonna fight anybody and embarrass myself, embarrass my family, embarrass my you know organization like that. There's no need for that. There's no need to be that kind of barbaric human being. But on the field, we're playing a very barbaric sport. You can do as you please, and that's when that's when I take all my animosity and all my anger and all my frustrations out on the field with disciplined football, sound football. You know, it takes it 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 takes a different kind of person to be able to turn that switch on and off and be able to step into the ring or step on the field and be the intense, incredible focus and kind of, kind of, you know, I guess angry human being that you have to be to be successful in those, in those atmospheres. How do you do it? You just, you, you, you have to have that switch. You take, you take it off. You treat them to totally different. And that's, that's why sometimes it, 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 it crashes and, and doesn't go off all so well because if you catch me in the moment on the field when I'm still in that zone, when I'm still as competitive as I can be and I'm trying to be in the place where I have to be to do everything I can to be successful in, on the football field and help my team win, then it's not, it's not going to come out as articulate, as smart, as, as charismatic because on the field, I'm not all those things. I'm everything I need to be to be a to be a winner. You know, we've seen this. We've seen Deion Sanders and Terrell Owens and Bart Scott and you can go much further back, Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali. We've seen guys get excited in the moment, make big pronouncements. What interested me so much about what happened to you was the reaction afterward, the way it mushroomed and the fact that race so quickly became involved. Yeah, I, you know, it, it was it was it was really it was really mind boggling and it was kind of it's kind of sad that the, the way the world reacted, you know, I can't say the world, I don't want to generalize people like that because there are a lot of great people who didn't react that way. 
But for the people who did react that way and throw the racial slurs and things like that out there, it was really, it was really sad, especially that close to Martin Luther King Day. You're, judging, you're not judging a guy. I'm not, I'm not out there beating on people or committing crimes or getting arrested or, or doing anything. I'm playing a football game at a high level, and I got excited. But what I did was within the lines of a football field. What they did was an actual reality. They showed their true character. That, that was, those were real comments, not in a moment, not in a, you know, they had time to think about it. They were sitting at a computer and they expressed themselves in a true way. And I thought society had moved past that. Hey, Richard, of all the backlash, the work, the, does that bother you more than any of it, the, the only reason it bothers me is because it seems like it's the accepted way of calling somebody the N-word nowadays. You know, it's like everybody else said the N-word, and then they say thug, and they're, they're like, oh, that's fine. And, and that's where it's kind of, you know, it, it kind of takes me aback, and it's, it's kind of disappointing because, because they know. What, what, what's the definition of a thug, really? You know, can a, can a guy on a football field just talking to people, you know, maybe, maybe I'm talking loudly and doing something, you know, talking like I'm not supposed to, but I'm not, you know, there were a hockey player. There was a hockey game where they didn't even play hockey. They just threw the puck aside and started fighting. I saw that and I said, oh man, I'm the thug? What, what's going on? Jeez. So I, I really, I'm really disappointed in being called a thug. Coming from where you come from, when people say the word thug, does that sort of hit the button for you? It, it, it does some, sometimes because I, I, I know some thugs and they, they know I'm far, the furthest thing from a thug. Um, and, you know, it's just, you, you coming from where I, I've fought that my whole life, just, just coming from where I'm coming from. You know, just because you hear Compton, you hear Watts, you hear cities like that, you just think thug, he's a, he's a gangster, he's, he's this, that, and the other. And then you hear Stanford, and they're like, oh, man, that doesn't even make sense. That's an oxymoron. And, and you, you fight it for so long, and for, to have it, you know, come back up and people start to use it again is really, it's, it's frustrating. Man, we have the most outstanding fans in the world. Are you the best corner in the league? Yes. Your trash you talk is a distraction to your teammates? It doesn't distract anybody. It motivates. Did you fight a lot as a kid? Not everybody in Compton's gang. Well, why do you see this league as a thug? Thank you, guys. Thank you.